Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Um, we continue talking about electricity and its properties. So today we will talk about very important property of electricity, um, the way how electricity is converted into heat, and basically some quantitative relationships between the heat and electricity. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on unizor.com. Um, so I suggest you to um, watch this lecture from the website, because every lecture uh, has very detailed notes. It's like a textbook, and all the lectures are organized in certain segments. It's, it's, it's a course, basically. Um, also, on the same website, you can find uh, the prerequisite course called Mass for Teens. Lots of mathematics is used in physics, um, especially in my course. So I do suggest you to be very comfortable with mass, especially with calculus and vectors. Okay, so let's talk about heat. <coughs> well, as many other things in physics, certain laws are discovered first experimentally and then later on um, some theoretists come up with explanation. Uh, this is no exception. There was actually a certain number of experiments which were conducted back in 19th century, um, usually associated with two names, um, Joel and Lance. These two physicists were experimenting with electricity and um, certain aspects um, of properties of certain um, environments the electric current was actually going through. As a result, they came up with very interesting property um, that certain amount of energy is released when the electric current is actually going um, across something, some conductor. And this amount of energy which is released is basically the heat, and they measured the heat, and they found basically a couple of very interesting things. That, for instance, if you measure um, the electric current, and the electric current they could actually measure using certain um, uh, tools which they have. So it will be proportional to square of the electric current. Also, it was proportional to square of um, the voltage if electric current is current is, is constant, and the proportionality to electric current is with voltage uh, constant. And 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 also, what was important, the greater the resistance uh, is with um, the same um, current, the greater amount of heat is, re is uh, released. Uh, so it's proportional to resistance. Um, now, if we are having the current constant and depend only on the um, and both current and uh, voltage constant and depend only on resistance, then again it will be uh, depending on resistance. So let me just do some kind of theoretical um, calculations here to basically explain all these um, experimental facts. And let me start from definitions of all these electric char ele uh, characteristics of electricity which we know of. We know of voltage, we know of amperage, and we know of resistance. So these three characteristics actually are very important and they define the circuit. So what is the circuit? Consider a very simple one. So you have the source of electricity of direct current and you have the only thing you have is 
a resistor. That's it. So you know the um, difference in uh, electric potential between the terminals of the source, which is the voltage. Um, R is the resistance. Now voltage is measured in volts, resistance is measured in ohms, and uh, the electric current is me uh, measured in amperes. And we have the Ohm's law, Ohm's law, which is what? U is equal to I times R. So we will use this Ohm's law for certain theoretical um, and, and, and logical conclusions. So let's start with the definition. What is a difference in electric potential, which is one volt? Now, by definition, it's if to transfer one coulomb from one terminal to another, if it requires one joule of work, then we are saying that the difference between electrical um, uh, potential is equal to one volt. So, voltage of one volt means that it requires one joule of work to move one coulomb of electricity from one terminal to another. Now, let's go with another definition. What is the amperes? One ampere. One ampere is the measure of the electric current when one coulomb of electricity is moved across the wire during each second. Okay? Now, let's consider our situation. If we have the voltage U, now if voltage is 1 volt, we know it requires 1 joule to move 1 coulomb from one terminal to another. If voltage is U volt, to move 1 coulomb of electricity requires obviously U joule joules, right? So, to move one coulomb of electricity between the terminals with U voltage requires U joules, right? One volt, one joule. U volts, U joules. That's basically the subs. Th th that's the uh, consequence of the of the definition of the of the voltage. It's all from the definition. Okay, now. So we have uh, u joules to require to move one coulomb. Now, how many coulombs do we move each second? Well, if our amperage is I, again one amper is one coulomb per second. Amperage I means I coulombs per second. So, if U joules require to move one coulomb, then I coulombs per second requires U times I joules. And this is per second. And finally, if you have this particular circuit in operation for a certain time, like T seconds, the amount of work is equal to U times I times T. Joules. Okay? So, again, let me 
um, repeat this logic. If uh, one jaw requires to move one coulomb in case the voltage is one volt, then u joules required to move the same one coulomb if the difference uh, of potential voltage is u volts. Now, if one coulomb requires one joule to move between these terminals, then we need i coulombs per second to move, which means we need u times i joules per second, and then if you have it for t seconds, you have this particular formula. Now, so this is the formula for amount of work. The source of electricity is actually performing to move electrons. Now we know it's electrons, because in the 19th century they, they had no idea about electrons, right? So they were just adjusting to whatever they had to. They knew that electricity is something, and they were able to measure the voltage, the amperage. As a result, they were measuring the resistance, etc. But they didn't know about electrons, so all they were saying is, well, there is something heat produced, but they didn't know why. Now, we know that right now, this is the work which is performed by the source of energy, and it moves electrons around, basically. That's what it does. Well, obviously, there is a result of this. Uh, so, what's the result of it? We are assuming in this course, and in probably many other cases, that the wiring doesn't really resist um, the electrons. Well, there is a resistance, but very small one relative to this. Or, if you wish, you can say that, okay, all the resistance, which is in both wires, and some kind of uh, detail, whatever it is here, is altogether as R. doesn't really matter. So, what I'm saying is that the result of electrons moving now the energy is supposed to be conserved so if my <coughs> if my source of electricity is exhausting certain energy does work it's supposed to be some kind of it's supposed to result in something so what's the result energy doesn't disappear so if we spend some work something must be done so what is being done well, when the electrons are moving, if this is a resistance, what they're doing, they're pushing around actually all the atoms, and they are, when as as they are moving uh, along the circuit, and as a result, all this chaotic movement of the atoms inside um, whatever whatever this thing is made of is basically a heat. Because what is the heat? Heat is an intensity of the moving of the molecules inside um, the inside the object. So as electrons are moving, they are excite the atoms a little bit more. And the more intense movement, well what is intense movement of electrons? That's the current, right? So the more intense the current, um, the the greater this um, excitement of atoms inside this particular object is, so the temperature is rising. So the result of this energy spent to move the electrons around is a more intense chaotic movement and therefore heat, the rise of the temperature of the resistor. Now, this uh, particular formula can be slightly modified using using the Ohm's law. So it's the same as if you will substitute instead of I, you will substitute IR. Instead of you substitute IR, you will have I squared RT. Or, <coughs> so this is a good formula when your current is constant. Now, if your voltage is constant, then you better use I is equal to U over R, right? So it's um, uh, u squared divided by r. So 
these are different formulas which gives you amount of work and therefore amount of heat um, not in calories but in joules but, but they are actually the same measurements uh, of, of the amount of energy so just different scales um, but in any case this is amount of work which is performed by this particular um, source of electricity now is it good or bad well for instance if you will consider incandescent lamp why does it light up well that's that's why because the electricity which is going through the lamp um, heats up this uh, um, tungsten spiral inside the lamp and when the temperature is rising well obviously it heats up but you know that when the temperature is rising first the metal becomes red and then it will be white basically and it will emit certain amount of energy um, as, as a heat and as a light basically it's a radiation of, uh, of energy and that's how we light up our rooms now in some other cases let's say it's a computer circuit um, well the electricity going through all these circuits and obviously heat up all the details which quite frankly is not good for electronics so we're trying to cool down now we cool down by by doing what well first obviously we can put some kind of a cooling mechanism like going circulating the air inside and that's why we have certain fans inside the computers well um, the uh, progress in technology actually um, resulted in changing the voltage of the entire circuit and you change the voltage obviously you decrease the amount of um, heat which is basically emitted by, by all these circuits so that's another way to uh, to fight this particular thing so sometimes heat can be good sometimes heat can, can be bad but in any case it's always related to electricity in practical cases for example um, obviously the uh, the uh, um, all the wiring which we have it has certain resistance and uh, since it has certain resistance um, it produces certain heat and in many cases that's not really a desirable thing we're trying to reduce the um, the resistance and if we reduce the resistance then obviously um, we will have less um, heat emitted um, uh, now let's just think about it what happens if you resist if you reduce the resistance if u is constant and you reduce the resistance you will increase the I right um, now how does it affect the amount of um, heat which is actually emitted well you can use one of these formulas obviously and I will have a few problems uh, in the next lecture to calculate what exactly is amount of heat what happens if we for instance um, in the same circuit we will put instead of one particular resistor two resistors of the same thing what happens with um, current what happens with amount of heat which is emitted so these will be little problems which we will solve in the next lecture so far I do suggest you to read the uh, notes for this particular lecture on unizor.com um, and uh, try to perform all these little calculations which I had and what's important is repeat the logic um, what exactly leads to this to this particular formula it's very useful to understand that the, the basically the theoretical concept behind this that's it thank you very much good luck